Yes. Um, hello, people. Uh, let us embark on our IoT simulation examples. Uh, remember, in our previous session, we demonstrated uh, an example of um, temperature monitor, and uh, we actually wrote some code in class. And um, this is the time to try to implement the code we wrote. Uh, and we said we are going to use Python object-oriented programming to simulate our temperature monitor. Let me actually share my screen and we look at that assignment that we had. Okay, let me see, it was mod two. Um, yes, I, I hope we can all see as the screen I've shared. So this, this, this is an assignment, IoT-based temperature monitoring system. The, okay, a simple uh, version of um, temperature monitor simulated in a uh, Python programming environment. So our objective, uh, number one, was to develop a simple IoT-based temperature monitoring system using Python. And the system will simulate a temperature sensor and display the sensor readings on the console. That is the objective. So what are some of the requirements uh, given to us? The requirement number one is to sim simulate the temperature sensor. So we create a temperature sensor class. Remember, we are using object-related programming where we have classes and objects and also uh, create some instances, okay? And they be able to execute our code. So we are saying uh, that you create a temperature sensor class that generates random temperature values within a specified range. And the range given to us uh, is, uh, for example, from 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius, okay? Then we also have an IoT device. Here we create an IoT device class that represents the IoT device. This class should have the following functionalities. One is should initialize the device with a unique device ID and the temperature sensor instance. And the two, it should implement a display temperature data method that reads the temperature from the sensor and prints it to the console. Perfect. So this is what we need to do, okay? Um, based on the assignment that is given to us. So let me stop sharing this and then share my, uh, my web. Okay, we are going to use an online platform. Okay, we are going to use an online platform to program and simulate our example. For example, we are going to use, uh, remember, I told you that uh, we can use uh, the Google Collab, Google Collaboratory uh, platform to run our Python code and be able to simulate. Okay, so let me let me uh, go to Google, for example. Let me see. Yeah, Google Collab is here. I can I can click on Google Collab and then you just click here. <coughs> okay, Google Collab, and uh, we create <coughs> a new notebook. Okay, you create a new notebook. Um, let's see. So if you don't have software installed, like PyCharm, the IDE, where you can run Python from, or VS Code, you can always, as long as you have internet, you can always use um, a platform like this one, the Google Core App. First and foremost, we need to name, it gives you an title, a project, you can name it, and we can call it IoT Assignment, for example. Assignment, assignment one. You can you can give it a name, any name, okay. And then from here, uh, you can start writing your code. Let me see if I can expand this one. Do I need to expand it, or we can just? I hope you guys you can see oh, this. Anyway, let let me expand it so that the code I write is uh, visible enough. Okay, it's visible enough. Okay, I think. Up to 25, okay, I guess that, that is enough for now. So we start from here and we say in class that in, in Python, you can start with importing some modules that you want to use. For example, uh, you use the import keyword and uh, the module. For example, the module we want to use is random so that we randomly select the uh, temperature from a, from a range, a specified range, and we can also import time, okay? We can also import time like this. And then after that, 
we can uh, create a class. We said we should have a class called temperature temperature sensor class and uh, define methods. Yeah, by the way, with our, with our our AI embedded in this platform, you can always have uh, code, code suggestions, but uh, it's always good to know what you're doing. So we can, uh, yes, we can have our init method, initialization method, and uh, in brackets, you put self, and then we can put, you see, he's actually suggesting that uh, that uh, we have minimum temp and maximum temp. We can accept that one, and then it will clearly initialize uh, you see, initialize for us. Now, the second is to read temperature. Remember, they said we can uh, use the read underscore temperature. Uh, here, it is suggesting this kind of code. It is okay. After this code is good. But let us uh, write it ourselves. Let us say define. We use read temperature like they suggested. Yes, wow. You see, it is giving us. I can accept here. And it, uh, oh, wow, it has completed the code. We return random.inform, then uh, we specify the range of values, which is self.minimum temperature. This one is defined up here from minimum to maximum. Yes, perfect. So that is done. And then that class is done. We can, we can look at another class. Uh, another class, IoT. It was IoT device, device class, like that one. IoT device class. Yeah, by the way, it has suggested for us some code. I can accept here and then modify the code. You see, we initialize here. We said we should call it device device ID. Okay, and then here we said we call it temperature. Okay, the temperature instance. Okay, that is according to our assignment temperature temperature instance like that. And then here we can initialize and say select the device ID device um, id is equal to actually device device <clears throat> yeah device id okay and you can accept now it has completed this one you see ai is very very interesting actually yes you guys you don't need to suffer uh, as long as you know what you're doing ai can actually complement can help you complete <clears throat> the work in a shortest possible time now here um here we said we are going to use another <clears throat> method to display display we said we call it display uh, temperature temperature underscore data okay something like that yes and we can accept the code oh wow we accept the code but here let us write our own code we said we can have a temperature uh, temperature you can actually call it temp data okay and they say equals equals uh equals self dot temperature yes equals self dot temperature dot read yes we accept self dot temperature dot read temperature yes this one here okay this one this is okay okay and then we can print yes wow has given us the clear code. We can actually do what? Print the device ID. Then we give this is, yeah, yes, absolutely. We select the device ID and also the temperature. Here, you can capture the temperature and here we capture the temp data, which is here. Yes, absolutely, this is, this is correct. We don't need to sleep here. We can sleep to the end. Uh, oh, we can sleep here, but let us remove that one. Okay, let us remove that one. So this is done. This is done. Perfect. And uh, we don't need this class. Okay, it will suggest a lot of code, but you cannot really remove it if you don't want it. Now we have our two classes, uh, class temperature sensor and class IoT device. Now we can um, create instances of uh, these objects. Okay, mm, we can create instances of this project and say, uh, for example, here you can create a variable called temperature, temperature sensor, or temperature reading, temperature underscore reading. For example, and we say this is equal to our temperature. Yes, a perfect. It is suggesting some code here. Yes, 
it is given by temperature sensor and then we initialize the minimum and maximum values. We can actually run it like this. Or uh, remember in class we said you can you can give the minimum temp here so that you know exactly what you're doing, what this means. Okay, it is minimum temperature, and also here you can give the maximum temp. Remember, these are variables that we initialized up here, here, minimum temperature and maximum temperature, so we can use them here. Okay, then we can have, it is suggesting to have two devices, but we want, we said we can we can use only one de device for now. And say, uh, IoT, you can call it IoT, IoT device, device. Okay, let us use just the word device, IoT device, is equal to IoT device, um, Yes, plus here, and then we can specify, remember here, it had the device ID and temperature. So this is the device ID name. You can actually run it like this, but it's always good to give it name so that uh, you clearly know exactly, uh, exactly what you meant or what you were doing in your code. So this is the device ID here, equaling to, you can call it, uh, you can call it device, device device one or oh, we can we can say dev zero zero one okay device zero zero one and here it was temperature here we can say temperature temperature instance there equaling to equaling to this temperature reading perfect so this is this is done so we are done with our instances and here we can create Wow, we can create a loop to run our code. You see, it is giving an example here, and we can accept the code. So it is saying, while well, true, so IoT device, yes, perfect, IoT device dot display temperature data. This one, this this method here. We use this instance here together with this method to display data. And data will be displayed, and then you can sleep. Use a time dot sleep function, and inside sleep, you can give how many seconds you want to sleep. Perfect. So it is done. It's done. So after writing your code, use this button here to run. Okay. And uh, we can click this button. Uh, this is our monitor here. It should be able to display. Uh, if we have no error, it should be able to display our temperature here. Okay. Let us see. Let us see. Yes. It's displaying. Ah, sorry. It has displayed actually with so many decimal places. We can actually specify a number of decimal places, but it is working as you can see 22.6528. But let us stop this one from running. You just click here and stop, and then adjust our code so that we specify the number of decimal presses from here. Temperature data here. We can say we can put full colon, we put <coughs> decimal point. We say 2f, <coughs> 2f means the number of decimal points. Okay, and uh, outside here we can put after the units. I don't know whether if we can uh, do zero one seven six to display. Yes, perfect. So we have put that degree here today, and I can put C capital C. Okay, so decimal presses. Remember here it was displaying so many decimal presses. Remember temperature is a continuous variable, and it will always display like this one. Is analog, so we can um, run again our code and see perfect. Wow, see our monitor now it is displaying perfectly well. Device 001 and then comma temperature 24.95, 28.59. So this is random, it randomly selects a temperature from uh, the minimum to the maximum, which is 20 to 30, and it displays that temperature. Wow, so this is a temperature monitor. And in our next example or oh, assignment, we can uh, make, uh, we can use this data to do some decisions, to make some decisions uh, based on the temperature reading. We can have, we can set the temperature uh, above which we can switch on uh, the AC and uh, below that particular temperature, we can switch off the AC to save on power. Okay, something like that. Switch on AC when the temperature is high. Switch off AC when the temperature is below a certain value so that you can save on power. Okay, so this is good. It will continuously 
display every five seconds, it will give you a reading. Okay, like this, like this, like this. Okay, this is this is very good, very good. Okay, you can separate this using a comma. Actually, in our class, we had put uh, just a bar, a pipe. You can put it there, or you just leave it like let me let me stop here, and uh, we can here instead of using a comma. We can actually use um, a bar that we used in class, a pipe like that, yeah, and then we can run again. So a pipe is just to separate these two, the device ID, number, and the temperature to vary. See, this is this is really very good. So uh, thank you so much. Let us stop here and please continue practicing. Okay, practice, practice, and practice. With programming, you need practice. There is no shortcut. You have to write the code, rewrite it again, go through it, understand, change here and there, and uh, run it, get errors, write fix errors, okay? Then you will run and you will learn and become perfect. So until next time, keep practicing.